Hi YouTube, here is a new episode of my Linux driver tutorial. With the read and the write command, we already know two different ways to interface a Linux kernel module from a device file. In today's video, I will show you a third option to do this. Today, I want to introduce you to IO control. IO control is um, a very driver specific function because it uses various commands, but we'll see this in a second. So be aware if you are using IO control a lot, um, your kernel module won't be so much portable any longer because read and write is more standardized. But IO control um, can give you some great opportunities to interface your Linux kernel module. So I think it's worth making a video about it. So here I am connected to my Raspberry Pi over SSH and I am inside my Linux driver tutorials folder. And today I will use this, um, this folder as a template for today's video. Here in, in 2 slash device number is a simple example how to allocate a device number because we will need a device file to communicate with the kernel module. So I will copy this folder here and I will create a new folder called IO control. So let me see the into it and let's look at the content here. We have four files. So device number.c is the source file for the Linux kernel module. The make file is a make file to build my kernel module. Test.c is the source code of a test application to test our device number. And test there is the binary, the compiled binary of test.c. So first thing I will do is I will rename device number.c to IO control example.c. And if I change this name here, I have to change it in the make file as well. Okay, so here we go. And now let's open the kernel module up. So here I will need another include. I will I will need to include Linux slash IO control dot H and here I will change the description to um, a simple example for IO control in a Linux kernel module. Okay. So what this kernel module does till now is here we have a uh, um, function which is called when the device file is opened and here I will change device number or let's substitute all occurrences of device number and replace it with IO control example here. This is faster. Okay. So here we have a function for opening and closing the device file. Down here we have, we define our file operations and here we will add our IO control later. Down here we have a init module. Here we are just allocating our device number, which we will later link to our device file. And here in this module exit function, we unregister all our device number and that's it. So now we can add the code for our IO control. So for, I will start with the function, the prototype of the function. So the return value is a long integer. Then we can choose any name for the function. I will choose my IO control. The first argument is a pointer to our device file. The second argument is a command. And the first Third argument is um, an unsigned integer, unsigned long, um, and it's called arg. And these are possible arguments because the definition for IO control in the user space is just the same. It's um, here we have to pass our file pointer. Then we have to pass a command and then we can pass a various amount of arguments. 
I will only use one argument, a bar control, but theoretically you can use multiple um, arguments here. And the structure of such an IO control is normally you have a switch case um, command here. And it, dep uh, and it depends on this command here you're passing, which function will be executed. So this is what I mean by IO control is very, um, very kernel module specific because on every device the command is, there are different commands available. So the first thing we have to do is we have to set up some commands. And I will do this in a .h file because I will include it in my test application here too. So let's add a new header file called iocontrol-test.h. Okay, this is just normal for a header file, just in case we include it multiple times. And now here I can define my commands. So I will define write value as um, here with this macro IOV, I declare this is a writable argument. So this argument will be written from um, the, from the um, user space to the kernel space. And these two things here are will be combined to a magic number, which will be our command's number. And the last thing we have to specify here is the type of um, arguments we're passing. And here I'm passing a pointer of the type in 32. So let's add a read value here, and this will be read only. So this will be um, this will be written from the kernel. Okay, and let's use one more argument here of a call a creature. And this will be from the type struct my struct pointer. And of course we have to define my struct here. So struct my struct. Okay, here I want to have an integer value. And I will call it repeat and a char array. So a little string here. Okay, so this is my um, struct here. So now let's go back to our kernels module. And here I will include IO control test.h. And now because I have the commands I can start implementing them. So we have the case we have the case um, write value here if the pass command is the write value command. Then we have to um, we have to copy um, from user. Here I will declare a global variable, variable for reading and writing. Okay, in in thirty two t, um, let's call it answer, and of course I will set it to forty two here, and here. It, in this case, I will write the answer with the value passed from the argument list here. And of course, I have to typecast my um, my unsigned long variable arc here. Okay, 
And if this returns a value greater than zero, we have a problem here. Okay. So I will copy this here. Oh, I forgot. And if I was successful, I will print out to the kernel's log pull update the answer to. Okay. And this is only if the copying was successful. Okay. So now let's implement the next um, case. So let's copy these six lines here and paste it in here. So in case we have passed the command read value, we will copy to the user and here Okay, we have to typecast our arguments. We want to copy the answer. Copying data to user failed in this case here and else. Um, the answer was copied. And we don't need this any longer here. So and now let's add our last case, which is reader. So in case, um, so for this case, I will add here a variable of the type struct my struct test, and yeah, let's copy this here. Um, well, not too much. Okay, and in this case, I will copy it to um, test. And here I have to cast it to struct my struct pointer. And of course, the size is now my size of my struct, or better size of test here. Okay. And in case of success, let's print out read to s and now let's just um, test dot repeat test dot um, name. Okay, and of course we have to return something here. So in case of success, I will return zero here. Okay, so the next thing I have to do here is I have to add my file operation. And for this, I have to override the unlock IO control pointer with my IO control, I believe. No, let's check how I name this function here my IO control. Yeah, with it. So now it should be correct. And that's all we have to change in our Linux kernel module here. So now let's try to compile it. Take some time. Okay, I have some errors here. Oh yeah, I believe I have a copy to user, copy from user. Let's see what I have made wrong. What will in it if yes. Okay, this should be correct. Copy from user. Okay, let me pass the video for a moment so I can check which error I made. Okay, I found the error. I was missing this um, include file here because here um, this with Linux slash uaccess.h will have um, the function definition of copy to and copy from user. And I have made um, some more errors here. So
So, okay, screeter should be correct. Read value, write value. Okay, let's try to compile it again. Ah, okay, mm -hmm. I know my error now, okay. So if we look back into our IO control test.h file here, I'm defining the same or mostly the same magic number for this read value IO control command and this here. So I have to change this to C because in every driver the command has to be a unique number for every command. So now I should be able to build it. Yeah, looks good. Okay. And now all we have to do is we have to implement our test application here. So what we are what we have here is a very simple application. We're just opening um, up a device file and we try if the opening was successful or not. And then we close the device file. I will create this device file manually with using the mknot command. So what I will do now is I will include um, this this io control dot h here, and now and I will include io control test dot h for our commands, and now. I have to define a new integer variable here. I will call it answer. Then I will um, create a variable from the type struct my struct. Okay, and now I can execute my IO control. So the function is called IO control. The first thing we have to pass is the file pointer. The second argument is the command. I will use read value here. And the last argument here is the arguments I want to pass. And in this case, I will just pass a pointer to my answer variable here. Answer is. OK, and now we should see a 42 here. And now let's write the answer. Let's do one, two, three here. So let's write it first and let's read it again. And now we should see, oh, and now we should see a one, two, three here. And now let's do one more thing. We will test our greeter and we will pass our struct here. Okay, and here oh the first argument should be just an integer. Okay, and that's it. So now let's try to compile it. Okay, and now let's try to um, insert our kernels module. Okay, our module is loaded. Let's check the kernels lock. Hello kernel, okay. And we have registered our device number. Now let's create a device file with the make not command. I will name it dev dummy, which is uh, have we, or the name we have in our test application too. We want to create a character char, a character device file, and the major number is 64, the minor number is 0. So now we should see this device file here. And now I can try to um, run my test application. Okay, opening was not possible. Okay. Let me check. Oh, yeah. 
It should be read and write. Only okay, I have, want to have both accesses here. Let's recompile it and let's run it with super user rights. Opening was not possible. Okay. But why? Oh, it's not dummy, it's mighty wise. My fault. I will change this to dummy. I will recompile it. And now I should be able to run it. So the answer is 32, yeah. The answer is now 123 because we've updated it and if we look into the kernel's log we should see all of this too. And down here we can see our struct was passed successfully too. So great, now we have another option to interface um, Linux kernel modules over a device file with IO control. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.